get where we are today in this video, there's a little bit of backstory. My 3D printing experience started all the way back in high school when I won an entrepreneurial grant for an invention that I'd come up with. My partner and I used this grant to buy our first 3D printer from CME CNC. This specifically was the OG Rostock Max V3U. Fast forward a couple years into college, printing out of my dorm, making some money on the side, learning how to print, gaining experience, and learning with failure, we get to current day me. Around September of this year, 2019, I had asked one of my professors what we could do to get a newer 3D printer in our design lab, as we had an outdated Flash Forge. I recommended the Rostock Max V4, as I had the V3 and had a lot of success with it. Called up Steve Wygant, who I know pretty well, ordered the printer, and just like that, the university had a reliable modern 3D printer again. Now, on to the juicy bits. Alright guys, real quick, these are the two materials that we used. The first one is the Atomic PLA. Uh, it's sold at cmecnc.com. You can also get these on Atomic's site as well. Um, but uh, it really doesn't matter the color or anything. That doesn't really affect things structurally. But then we have the Carbon Fiber Pet G. Um, this is a, it prints very, very nicely. And you can find these at cmecnc.com. So as you keep watching, I wanted to go over this one truss in particular that held seven kilonewtons, which if you convert it online is about 1600 pounds. Uh, it's about 250 pounds per kilonewton. Um, this one was really remarkable. Um, it was PLA. And what we found really was that carbon fiber PET G wasn't necessarily stronger than PLA but it was more durable and more ductile, if you will, um, in comparison to like, oh, um, lead versus steel. Lead you, is pretty malleable. You can move it around with your hands. Steel, unless it's super thin, you're not gonna be able to move it around very much with your hands. Um, so PLA, we found was more brittle on average than a carbon fiber PET G, which was more ductile on average. Um, so that was pretty interesting to find. Um, each group in the class ran their truss after creating it in CAD. They either used ANSYS, and we actually have a class for that on campus, or we used Fusion 360. Um, that's the one I preferred to use because if you make a quick design change, all you have to do is save it and swap back, regenerate your mesh, etc, etc. It's all in one package. Um, on average, all the designs supported around 3 to 4 kilonewtons. That was a pretty common theme. Um, and it was a 10 and a half inch span for everyone. So if you want to know more or want to see all of the um, trusses being broke, I can upload a video for that if you guys want something like that. Um, but if you want a more in-depth technical interpretation and analysis on our truss that myself and my partner did, I will leave a link to that in the description so you can read that and um, have fun nerding out. But um, other than that, it was a really fun project and I'm curious to see more material testing in the future. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If you want to learn more about what was talked about in this video, visit the link in the description to the technical report. And as always, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and possibly subscribing if you like what you see. Till next time.